Hi, this is Kim. Good evening. I want to go over the practice quizzes that we had in your homework folder in week eight. And before I do that, I want to make sure that you looked in your uh, pages. I'm going to go here to pages and just remind you that if you go to pages and then when you click view all pages, you're able to see all of the weeks, so all of the weeks that we've done previously. Now you will note, in addition to week eight, there's this also week eight continued here. And if I go in here, I will see a couple things. The answers to the tax quiz, so you can check your work against what I gave you. And then all of the answers to some homework that we've had specifically related to bonds. So I wanted to make sure that you, you had the answers out there so you could review your homework and also just check it just to make sure. I think this will help you study for the quiz so that you can uh, do a good job. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to view all pages up here. And I'm going to go to week eight, which is where we had the practice quizzes. And I'm just going to download the first quiz here and go over it. So here we go. First question says, list all the ways we make money in stocks, bonds, and cash equivalents. So I don't know if you remember, but way back when we talked about the investment pyramid and the investment pyramid is, uh, is just like that. It's a triangle. The bottom layer of the triangle had all our cash equivalents. So when we talk about cash equivalents, they included investments uh, such as CDs, bond, uh, savings bonds, Series I and Series E. We talked about money market accounts and savings, really. Uh, we also had something called a T-bill. Now, for all of those cash equivalents, the only way that we made money on any of those, any of those exclusive, exclusively, is interest. So that is the only way you can make money in uh, cash. Now, before I talk about stocks and bonds, I want to remind you that total return equals any kind of income. So income can be in the form of interest, Uh, or dividends. And then we're going to add here capital gains. All right, so that's what total return is. So let's go back down here to bonds. And if we think about the, the primary way we make money in bonds is off the, the interest. The interest. So interest on a bond, the amount if you remember correctly, which we're going to talk about a little later, is that par value multiplied by the, two, the coupon rate. Now, the other way we make money in bonds is, of course, capital gains. Remember that we can buy a bond below par, and then at maturity, we are always going to receive par back. So that would then trigger some kind of capital gain. Uh, Another thing we could look at is if we bought a, a bond at a premium. So if we bought it above par, somewhere above $1,000. Remember, at maturity, we're only going to get $1,000 back. So instead of having a capital gain here, we would have a capital loss. But still, factored into our total return would even be a capital loss. OK, and lastly, we have stocks. So we've been talking about stocks recently and looking up different stocks. And you should remember from this analysis that we make money in stocks from dividends. Stocks do not pay any type of interest. They only pay dividends. And remember that amount, the declared dividend, is paid on each share you own. So besides dividends, we also have capital gains. And remember with the different flavors of stocks, income stocks, growth stocks, et cetera. Some, uh, especially growth stocks, we're looking for capital gains. And with income stocks, we're looking for dividends. There is one other way to make money in stocks that your book refers to, and that is a stock split. So there is a potential to make money from a stock split as well. All right, next question. This is about uh, a choice. Do we choice be do we choose between a corporate AAA or a muni AAA? And when you look at this question, 
the first thing that you should notice is that there's a muni here. And what you should remember about the muni right off the bat is that it's tax exempt. So we don't pay any taxes on the earnings that we make on this muni. So if I'm looking at this, I see that I have a muni with a 6% coupon rate. So a 6% coupon here tells me that my annual interest is going to be, uh, again, the coupon. So 6% multiplied by $1,000, which is par value, which is going to give me $60. So that's $60. I'm not going to be taxed on because a muni is tax exempt. All right, now a corporate, applying the same principles, I'm going to have a $70 coupon payment. But corporates are taxed, and my tax bracket is 25%. So of that $70, I have to pay, okay? So this is but you will pay taxes. So the tax is at 75%. So if I take 0.25 and I multiply it by 75, or um, excuse me, $70, what do I get? I wish I could do that off the top of my head, but I can't. So I'm keying this in here right now, and I'm going to tell you that 0.25 times seventy dollars is seventeen fifty. Okay, so seventy dollars subtract seventeen fifty, which means I only make fifty two dollars and fifty cents after I pay taxes. So which one is a better deal, the Muni where I make sixty dollars? or the corporate where I make 52. And of course, the answer here would be the Muni. Okay, Muni is the better deal. Now there's also a formula that I've given you before that I'll remind you of here, if you just want to use the formula. It's very simple. The formula is step one. Take one, subtract the tax rate. So in this case, it's going to be, or 1 subtract 0.25, which is going to give you 0.75. Next, 2, take the muni rate and divide by uh, number 1. So that's going to equal the muni rate, which is 6%, 6 divided by 0.75 gives me what? Eight percent. Now I have a tax adjusted muni that I can compare to the corporate. So again, the muni is going to pay me eight percent if it was a taxed bond versus the corporate, which was only going to pay me seven. So and again, this is going to tell you, take the Muni. Muni is higher. So however you want to do it, this way, calculating, or this way, it's going to give you the same answer. OK, this is your big question. And there's definitely going to be one of these on your test. It's a 10-point question. And I'm going to ask you to evaluate Chevron, not Chevron and Exxon, but two companies that directly compete with each other. So you're going to have to look up six factors while you're taking the test. And I'm going to tell you right now that factors are not the symbol, the, uh, the exchange traded, or the price. So factors are PE, course uh, ROE, return on equity, uh, EPS, earnings per share, divs, dividends, about that, 
Uh, also, they're going to the the revenue for the last three years. The fifty-two week change. Beta, etc. Debt, debt to cash. So those are factors. So what you're going to do is you're going to look up the factors for Chevron and Exxon. And you're going to do an analysis based on what you find out. You're going to look at these and you're going to, to tell me, just based on the factors, which one seems like a better investment and why. Okay? If, what happens if you find that both companies seem equally, equally good? Maybe they both look good. You can go ahead and say that. But you may have to make sure that you explain why you, why you picked what you picked. You can't just give me the analysis and say, okay, now, hey, you figure it out. I want you to look at it. I want you to read the numbers. I want you to look at everything together. And then I want you to make a conclusion. So remember, don't include these as factors. You're going to have to use at least six factors, and you have plenty to choose from here. So do a good job on this because it's worth 10 points. And again, don't forget to answer this last question. Which one represents the best investment and why? Why did you feel that way? All right, here's another bond question. You purchased a corporate bond three years ago, pays you 6%. The purchase price was 1050 so you bought it at a premium. Today, comparable bonds are paying 4%. So interest rates have gone down from 6 to 4 percent. So we know that when interest rates go down, bond prices go up. They have an inverse relationship. So the first question is here, what is the annual dollar amount of interest re you receive from your bond? And once again, that is the coupon multiplied by par value. So what does that equal here? The coupon point 06 times uh, 1,000, which equals $60. Don't make the mistake and multiply it by 1,050. That's the price. That is not the same thing as par value, which is always 1,000. Next, okay, comparable bonds are paying 4%. What is the approximate dollar price for which you could sell your bond? So if you had to sell your bond today, you would expect to sell it for a price that's higher because people are going to be willing to pay a premium for your bond that pays 6% over new bonds that pay 4%. So remember, the equation, current price equals the coupon payment of your bond divided by the current rate. So we plug in the math, the coupon payment of your, don, your bond from A is $60 divided by uh, the new uh, current rate, 0 0.04. So $60 divided by 0 0.04 is 15, oops, 15.50. Got it? and you would expect your bond price to go up. Or 15, how about 1500? Now, we also remember that the current rate equals also the coupon payment, and this time divided by the current price. Just make sure you know those equations for the quiz. All right, this one, number five. You have to go do a little research here on finance.yahoo.com because I've asked you to look up the price one year ago for a stock, and you, you need to know how to do that. So I'm going to pop over here, and I'm going to go to finance.yahoo. And we're looking up Costco. My girls are laughing at me in the background, so I'm not why, but I can hear them. You 
you can see up here I'm waiting and waiting. Boy, and really waiting. Finally. Okay, well that took forever. Here we have Costco. Now to find the price one year ago, we have to go to historical data. We're going to look at the price. I mean, you could scroll down and go through it. For me personally, I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to look at the ending date. I'm just going to change this to a 6. Go to Done and click Apply. And it's going to give me The closing price of Yahoo one year ago was $152.67. So I'm going to take that back to my problem here. $152.67 multiplied by 100 shares. And that's going to equal 15,267. I'd like to do this this way. I'd like to go for costs and then I like to go for income. Just keeps it simple. So that's how much I paid for my hundred shares of Costco a year ago. Now I'm looking through this problem and I also note that I had to pay a broker ten dollars when I bought it and ten dollars when I sold. So there's another twenty dollars of broker fees. All right now I'm going to income. Well the cost today of Yahoo is $165.24. So today I sold it. So $165.24 again multiplied by 100 shares equals 16,524. This is part of my income. I also earned the dividend. So the annual dividend posted on the stock. So I'm going to go back here to Yahoo and I know I can just go to the summary page right here and I can see that the posted dividend is a dollar eighty, one dollar and eighty cents. It's right here. I'm gonna go back here, and I have a dollar eighty again multiplied by a hundred shares, which is going to give me a hundred and eighty dollars in dividend income. So when I add these up, these two right here, my total income which is 16,524 plus $180. It gives me 16,704 total income. And I'm going to subtract now my total cost, which is, I mean, I can at $20 here in broker fees. So I can, my total cost is going to be 15287. There's my total cost, which is going to give me my total income of 1417. So that's what I made. If I wanted to divide that by what I actually spent, so if I divide that by 14287, it's going to give me my return for this rolling year here one which is about nine percent okay so last year i made about nine percent on yahoo total return counting for my dividends and also for my capital gains All right, moving on. Although you are studying 
how did you know we're looking at individual stocks and bonds what are three reasons why they are unsuitable not suitable for most of you well the first thing is is diversity you can't buy just one stock you would expose yourself to too much risk because you have all your eggs in one basket and secondly you can't even buy one bond you have to buy 10 at a time for bonds so that's going to cost you up around ten thousand dollars so really bonds are just too expensive next uh, I would say that you're probably not ready so you're too green uh, in this area and maybe another thing would be you know money it's too expensive uh, you need to uh, go for mutual funds you could say you need to take more of a class you need to get some more help you could say a number of things on here I don't think that would be a difficult question all right dollar cost averaging and I'm going to actually point you to a video so I'm going to give you the answer here and then I'm going to point you to a video to study it's also in your book okay this strategy forces it, it forces you to buy fewer shares when prices are high and more shares when prices are low okay that's the discipline the discipline part of this okay so as long as the stock market oops increases over time your average cost will be lower than your average than your revenue which means you will make money Uh, before I close this out I'll go post the link that I want you to look at there and lastly we have so why do we care about stock market indexes well I don't know about you but they they kind of give us an, a gauge on several things on how well our investments are doing if we own even funds uh, so it, it's really a gauge of our investments I'll not spell that right I'm not spelling it right. Uh, it also gives the S&P um, is our overall economy. So how's our overall economy doing? Uh, and the an S&P is also the basis for beta. So I guess that's that's why we care about stock market ind indices. At least while why I care. Okay, so I'm going to go over here right now, and I want you to go to Investopedia, which is a good financial website. And when you're here, I want you to look up dollar cost averaging. Here we go. They have a video, so I'm going to go ahead and put this link right here, close it out, and I'm going to ask you to listen to that video as you study for your quiz. So I'll put that right there. All right, so now I've done this one. Let me go back in here and see if your other quiz has anything on it that, that I didn't cover. Okay, here you go. First question. To find the five types of stocks, I'm going to give you one example of this. So one type of stock would be an income stock. Okay, income stocks. Uh, what does it mean? Investors buy for the high dividend instead of uh, cap gain. Okay? That's what it is. It's an income stock. The purchasing decision is for that dividend income. 
Okay, so it's usually for in for investors who are living off dividends. So that would be an example. The other types we talked about would be growth, blue chip, cyclicals, and penny stocks. Differences between corporate and government bonds. Well, corporate bonds are rated, uh, whereas government bonds, so I'll be more specific here, corporate are rated, okay? All government, all federal government are AAA. Um, federal government are not callable. Munis, tax-free. Uh, corporates make more money. And then again, that goes back to the fact that they're not as safe as government bonds. Uh, they both have really large markets for different, uh, for both the corporate bond market and the um, federal treasury market. I mean, there's different, there's still all different kinds of maturity dates, but there's four. There's four differences. There's some tax advantages here. You might want to look those up too. Okay, this is another evaluate, only I had Procter and Gamble and Johnson and Johnson, so I'm not going to go through that again. This is also similar to the last problem. You purchased a corporate bond that pays 6%. Now it's paying 8%, so interest rates have gone up, which means your bond price has gone down. But I went through those formulas before. Here's another purchasing decision. And uh, here's a bond listing that I gave you, and you should be able to read across here. First of all, the par value on a bond is always $1,000. So what's the price? Well, the price, remember, you have to move the decimal over one space because this is a percent. Any quota is going to have a percent of 1,000. So when we move the decimal over pla one place, it makes this bond $1,015. Here's the coupon, 6.5%, which means that the Annual coupon is $65, but I asked for semi-annual, so you need to divide it by 2, which is going to give you uh, $32.50. Oops, divided by 2 equals $32.50. Current yield, I gave you the equation right there. The rating, of course, is double A, and callable is no. And here's the bonus question. Why is the yield to maturity lower than the coupon rate? I'm not even going to tell you the answer. I want you to think about that. Why is it lower than the coupon rate? I asked you to describe market order. Again, a market order is where we're going to just buy it at the current price. Just whatever the uh, quoted price. A limit order is when we're going to place conditions. So I, you know, I'm going to buy if stock uh, hits or reaches so much, reaches a uh, defined dollar amount. And then lastly is a stop loss, and that says to to either, you know, get, it's, it's definite. Sell this if the stock drops, you know, to a level or by a percent. And this is your, your sort of downside protection. Let's say you, you're going on vacation, you're not going to be around for a couple weeks, and you want to protect your investments. You can put in a stop loss that says, hey, if something happens crazy while I'm gone, just go ahead and sell it off so you don't lose all your money. And then here, it's again these strategies, buy and hold is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, direct investment is where you're going to, you're going to buy stock directly from a company. And there are several companies that will allow you to, to do this. The advantage is that you avoid some initial, you don't, you avoid commission because you're, 
you're go not going through a, a your brokerage firm to buy the stock you're going to the company so you're saving on commissions the disadvantage is, is that it comes with a lot of weird restrictions sometimes you have to own stock in your personal account before you can buy it from a direct company and then when you want to transfer it to sell it it's a it's a little difficult uh, procedure so uh, I don't do it personally but it is available dividend reinvestment again dividends are are posted the annual dividend is posted, but it's it's paid in four installments throughout the year. So if you continually reinvest your dividends every time you receive them, it would it would really be a form of dollar cost averaging. So again, dividend reinvestments, you go ahead and, and use your dividends to buy let's do that. To buy more shares of the investment. Okay, it's a form of dollar cost averaging, but you only do it quarterly. And of course, dollar cost averaging you're going to read about before. And then lastly, here are the three stock market indices. You better be able to look them up on Finance Yahoo. Tell me about them. I mean, what is the Dow? So we have, let me give you an example. The, the Dow is the index that tracks the New York Stock Exchange. 30 stocks, weighted index. So that's what you would say for the Dow, and then you'd go ahead and look it up on Yahoo and tell me what the current, what is the current number today? So you'd do that for both the, the other two as well, the NASDAQ and the uh, S&P 500. So, okay, I think that's, uh, that's good. I mean, I don't want to give you, I think you have a pretty good idea of what I'm going to ask. Not all the questions will be the same, but some will. So make sure you, you listen to this and go through it. And again, refer back to the, the questions from the bond problems. And I think you'll be good to go. So thanks for listening and I'll see you soon.